On today's episode, uh, I'm going to give you a warning. If you're eating or about to have lunch, just wait or listen to this episode after. Uh, But if you've ever heard me talk about cleanses or parasites, today is the day. This episode is for you. We've got Aaron Andrus with us, and we are going to go over top to bottom everything you need to know about doing a parasite cleanse. And as you can see here in my hand, if you're watching, we've got actual examples of parasites from inside people's bodies. So if you're on the audio version, pop over to YouTube because there's stuff you're going to want to see. But stay tuned, like, listen, and subscribe. You will find this episode to be absolutely fascinating. Wherever you are and however you are listening, thanks for being back with us on another episode of Winning the Moment. Uh, If you are an avid listener, you've heard me talk about parasites before, and today we're going to get it right from the source. Yay. So I've got Erin Andrus here with me. I did a cleanse with her, um, man, six months ago, eight months ago maybe. Yeah. And since I've done it, I've told everyone because you you can't do it and not tell people. It's insane, right? What pe- what things are coming out of you, and you're like, "Hey, I got to tell her." A funny story. So, um, Andrew Spain, our friend of mine who was on the podcast, I told him he's got to do it. Yeah. And he was like in disbelief when I told him. Okay. Right. Like some people are, they don't even believe it. They yeah. Can't. I I wouldn't have believed it. I wouldn't have believed they look like they do. Um. And so, <laughs> and then so McCray Helpler did do it. Yes, I love um, him. He's great. And so one night he got group text McCray and I, and he's like, "You guys, please." record a video of what you did and send it to me because my family doesn't believe me uh-huh. because he was telling them about it. Yes. <laughs> and so I recorded myself like going over the process, you know, and everyone's just in disbelief. But let's just let you kind of unpack it. We've got some parasites here. So I want to hold some of those up so they can see it. Like these are from p- people's insides. Yeah. So this one specifically um, this client had a nest come out. This was the biggest one, but he had stage four pancreatic cancer and this came out on him about day eight. Um, and just nests of little baby worms came out with it as well. So this one, this one, I was so pleased and I can, you know, they're all different. So there's, there's millions of different parasites. There's so many just in one species alone, there's over 300, in one parasite alone, there's over like 300 different types of species of that one parasite. There's so Ew. many parasites. <coughs> so but there's three main really active ones. And then from those three main active ones, there's like 300 different species. Okay, like they're offshoots. Species. Yeah, they're offshoots. Yeah. And so um, I have people coming in who are healthy as can be, and we clean them out and we still get things like this out. We have people that come in with stage four pancreatic cancer or, or breast cancer, like this breast cancer. Wow. Um, and the it's interesting to see, you know, I think the, the more white and clear conscious uh, parasites are, like they're like this. You know, they're clear. They're white. Yeah, they're interesting. Kind of like they're clean. These come out not with poop either. It is it is interesting. They are very attached to housings that they make and create. And these housings will be like mucoided plaque that's built up. And you'll see when they come out, you'll see the eggs, the little nests. And then it's all attached to heavy metals, so many heavy metals and aluminums. They'd, they'll house themselves in, to, into these like heavy metal places in your body. Well, and I heard someone uh, on another podcast like joking about like the like, you know, they call us like quirky or whatever, you know, yeah. and like, well, yeah, you take this stuff and then you shit it out. So it's like, of <laughs> course. And so you've got the stuff right there. Like, that's a facilium pudding, right? Right. The binder, this pulls out the heavy and, metals and the, and the housing. So maybe, uh, you know, shed some light on that myth. Cause like the person that I was listening to maybe even been a Joe Rogan podcast and they're yeah. talking about like, you take this pudding yeah. and then you shit it out, but you're literally just shitting out the pudding you took. But this no. is not huh. ladies and gentlemen, uh, right? That is not pudding. That's not the pudding. You can definitely tell and look, see these little bugs. These are creatures, bugs. We get out all oh, different yeah, let me types, see that. different types, so many. And so, I mean, that is like a full, like for the audience that's listening that is like the size of a bumblebee bug living yes, inside of you. Yes. Yes. I had these ones. Oh my God. Were like shrimp. They're hard to see in there. But I've had ones come out that are just like shrimp. There's and they're even like this big and they look like shrimp. Well, it's like our body is an ecosystem, right? Yeah. So um the binder's pulling out. The binder binds and pulls out the plaque housing and the heavy metals, and then you see the parasites all bound to it. You can see, you know, 
these that are they're they're always attached to the houses like that they make. It is so wild. And the binder just pulls it out. The so they're just nesting like any out. other bug or animal. Yeah. And ropeworm, everyone has ropeworm. And ropeworm is just like the mucoided plaque petrified buildup. And when it ropeworm comes out, you can see your colon lining exactly. Yeah. Uh-huh. I had a huge one when I yes. did the cleanse. Yes. So, um, yeah, it's really good stuff. So what got you into this? Like, how did you ever become the parasite person? Uh, okay, so healing my own body originally, I got really sick and um, trying to figure out how to heal. Doctors what were you were, sick with? I was, so doctors were telling me different things. One doctor told me I had a hernia. Another doctor told me I had gallstones. Another doctor told me something was wrong with my liver. So I was like, okay, I'm just stepping back a little bit and I'm yeah. going to assess myself. And then I found um, online a guy named Luigi and he had this online group and he was working with people for 40 day fasts, but he would have, you know, be doing herbs, binder and tincture. And then what people were pulling out, I mean, where I was in this group and I just couldn't believe it. So I got on his protocol. I did my own and I did it for 12 days. It was, I did a great juice fast for 12 days with this protocol. Okay. And I, um, so you ate nothing for 12 days, right? Yes. And I pulled out so many um, gallstones. I pulled out all. So before I really realized what these parasites that were that were coming out of me, I was just like, holy, holy crap. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. (laughs) And it it was like um, what was coming out was just big rope worms, big plaques. And I just couldn't believe it. And then how I began to feel I was uh, and back then I was too scared to even really go through my go through yeah. it and do an analysis and see, okay, parasites, parasites. I would just look at it and be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it and flush it. And just so I people know so for sure, we're it. talking about poop, right? Yes. You're, they're afraid to look at yes. your poop. Yeah. Because yeah. it's a little gross. But I was so scared of it. I was yeah. so, so scared about it. I was almost even so scared to cleanse. It was wild. I was like, I don't know if I should be taking this, this is foreign thing in my body. You know, it's interesting how we will ingest processed foods all day long. Yeah. You turn around and look at the ingredients on the box. You don't even know what you're eating. Well, <laughs> but, but someone's telling me to try to take an herb that grows out of the ground. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I told Megan, because M- Megan's the same way, very particular about the food she puts yes. in her body. I said, you know, what doesn't make any sense to me <laughs> is you want to get Botox, but yet you won't let me have like regular food. Yeah, like, there you go. Right? Isn't that like... The body starts to yeah. push it through somehow, some <laughs> you way, know? process it. Yes. So it's pretty funny. It is funny what we'll choose to believe. And- well, and I saw a video the other day of someone at like Costco. So all your meat is... You know, you're running into trouble with with most meats in yes. a traditional grocery store, right? Absolutely. Um, and but Costco, I would always have leaned more like it's better, you know. Sure. But then someone had like a salmon, and there was a live parasite like it in was it, crawling out of it, right? In the store, right? Fish are one of the one of the worst things you can ingest too right now, especially because there's fish farming and it's just uh, it's wrought with bacteria. Like unless you catch that fish in the ocean yourself. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't trust it. And you know, um. As far as meat goes, deer and elk are going to be your most organic and you're going to be able to get the most nutrient dense efficiency of eating that kind of meat versus Yeah, we bought processed. a half a cow from Barton Ranch, okay. which is here in southern Utah, all yeah. grass fed, like never interacts with humans, no like no impact Beautiful. from whatever, you yes. know. And that's been amazing. Like it is tangibly different. Like Good. it's such a such a different process. Right, In fact, my a friend of ours having us over for a barbecue tomorrow, uh-huh. and he's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna get some meat." Uh, like Albertsons has some good deals, and yeah. my wife was like, like, "Oh, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Like I don't mean to be that person, but I am that person, and yeah. we'll bring our own meat." So <laughs> I'm so I'm such that person, and to an extent, be the, where like you know, I usually tend to bring my own food to the places I'll go to because I'm like, "Oh, is that an organic? Is this lettuce organic? Is this organic? Or is this organic?" I'm at the place where I'm just like, I'll only want certain things in my body. And it's interesting how offended people will get by it. Yeah. So I just choose to allow people to be and eat how they want to eat. And um, I hope the same for myself. So I just bring my own. Well, what do you think about that company, Appel? Or um, Appeal? Oh, the Appeal. How, yeah. yeah. The chemicals. That they're but they're, and they're still being considered organic. Yeah. It's interesting, right? How they're trying to really go through loopholes to create 
Like, why are they doing that to us? So they're extra money. And yeah, then... non-organic, organic mm-hmm. food. Like, uh-huh. and if the mm-hmm. consumer doesn't know, right. and they're trying they're to make a, a, a choice, and you're also oftentimes paying more for organic. Yep. So you're paying more for this produce because you're supposed to be able to trust its origin. Right. And now, now you I... can't even really do that. Yeah, the apples, I really, it's hard for me to trust eating apples. I'll buy them at natural grocers, but that's about the only place. Yeah. You have to check really closely with apples for sure on that. Yeah, Megan will only get her produce. Like, she won't even do Costco produce anymore. Yeah, it's hard for me to go anywhere but natural grocers. I'm really um, grateful that natural grocers, they will talk against like things like a pill and they don't use yeah. um, produce that growers are using those kinds of things. So, um, but yeah, it's interesting how, how big pharma just wants us to be such a certain way. So we keep coming back. Well, and it's funny too, that like we, um, like we'll talk about like our kids and like, Oh, they're kids. Just let them have it. Oh, you know, right. like, but it's like, man, you're, we're poisoning ourselves, yes. you know? And like, if you go to other countries, they don't have the food that we have. No. And it, you know, the kids, it's so important to really try to have them start young, understanding the things that you're putting in your mouth are important. We're all looking every, for every moment, everyone's just looking to feed, looking to feed, finding the nourishment. We want the right chemicals to hit in our body so that we can feel the best. Yeah. And um, so we're always constantly looking for something to put in our mouth, especially kids, I feel like, you know, because they want yeah. nourished more than anyone. Yeah. And they're attention. constantly growing. So if we can teach people at a young age the importance of what you're putting inside of your body, how it's going to help not only your physical, but your energetic and your spiritual. So that's what got me into this is my own healing and realizing um, that in order for the cells to really heal, because the perspective has shifted, you know, we might have grown in our consciousness and changed the way that we think and are, but the body also needs to change that conditioning yeah. that's happened since we were, you know, young from zero to eight, you know, our brains and theta just program, program, program. So it's good that we can go in there and consciously see ourselves and change and make shifts physically. So, okay, I'm not going to eat this food anymore, even though it's what was feeding a certain condition inside of me while well, I'm changed. Now. Yeah. Well, and I realized too, like even doing the cleanse with you or other efforts I've done where I realized that so much of my hunger was emotional based, uh-huh. right? Like right. chicken noodle soup makes me happy because it feels like happiness. <laughs> yeah. And so I'll eat too much of it, right? right? Exactly. And luckily Megan makes it from scratch. So it's good. It's not bad for me. But yeah. there's other foods like pizza that also make me happy. Right. That but are certainly have, not good for but me. But then you have to go through this cycle yeah. depression of the next day and the day after. Like, yeah. why do I feel this way? Why all of a sudden am I depressed or not feeling well? Okay, maybe it's because I ate some of this. So you did that 12-day cleanse. Yeah. You did the grape grapefruit diet. Yes, uh, and I was cleaning and clearing my body and healing myself so rapidly. And I realized, and and I was going through a lot of emotional things. I had big changes in my life, huge changes at that time. So I didn't really realize that because my consciousness was shifting and the way I was perceiving life was shifting, my bo- body also needed to shift. Sure. So um, I was getting body work done and the body, the lady said- How long ago was this? This was, this would have been a solid like 10 years ago. Okay. And the lady said, okay, you- you, you know, you're shifting this entire belief system that you've not only had in your lifetime, but it's generational. And, she, you know, are you, she asked me, are you okay? And that broke me. Just somebody asked me if I was okay. Yeah. I just cried and cried and cried. I went home. I ended up waking up the next morning, completely leaving my body, having an out-of-body experience. But I didn't realize it. I was walking around my house and I looked in the mirror and I was like this ethereal body. And I was like, oh my gosh. What's ethereal? Ethereal. It was like a spirit body. It okay. wasn't real. Not it was your... like light and I could see just, it was just like light running through me and I thought I was dead and it sucked me back in my body. I shot up really quick and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm alive, but I'm dead. I'm dying. And I thought I was dying. And so wow. I, I, uh, I called up my sister and I was like, hey, what do I do right now? She says, breathe. And she started having me say mantras and these mantras then immediately started taking me out of my body again. I'm like, oh, oh, I have control of my body, complete control. And that's when I had this intelligence and consciousness come in, realize I'm not only in charge of my external reality, but in my internal reality. I can shift and change both. I am the conductor. I am the creator. And so I've just, ever since that moment, just gone into meditation inwardly and changed my body. Okay. My gallbladder is okay to process. My liver is okay to process. My blood's okay to process. Like I'm okay to connect to, you know, anything I need to in this universe, God, creation, the earth, and my body was healing rapidly from it. And so, um, I changed instantly, like, and people around me. Was this me, shortly thereafter the cleanse? Like, 
Um, yes, it was all kind of snowballed into this um, transformation transformation in area of my life. And people around me said, Aaron, what are you doing to change? And I just started offering. I knew I didn't want to push it on anybody. Yeah. That I just wanted to lead by example because I had shifted so dramatically. And so I just became this happy person healing and people came to me and wanted to know what I was doing. And then I started teaching and I really got into energy work and teaching people how to go inward to the places in their body that were holding pressure or holding this um, block and really bringing up the emotion behind it and saying things out loud that they've never said before and being able to cry it out and then the body healing so rapidly from that what's interesting uh hearing about that like you, your body work is like a, f- a four hour like yes. long session right yeah. um i don't have uh in my conscious self i have no trauma in my life that's yeah, like that's so like nice. a devastating thing right yeah and so it's like when people are talking about like all this hard work they have to do yeah and i'm either really lucky because i don't have it or i have it and i just erased it right yeah, and so it's right. like i always wonder like do i want to do something like that because if if i don't if i don't believe i have any yeah th- then i don't but right. what if i did it and then it was like something came up and it was like oh i got to deal with this thing but to my, as far as i know i don't have any uh, any trauma i love that what's amazing is perspective is everything so yeah. your perspective is going to be what is and if yeah. you're like hey no i'm not like, i don't have trauma my body is good um that's probably a really big portion of it. I could probably go and we could probably find some trauma. I know, but do like I want to find it? You know, least, yeah. do I want to find do that trauma? Find <laughs> so, do you have any body elements? I would say, okay, like what in your body hurts? Um, yeah, not really. Okay, nothing ever. Um, sometimes my lower back. Okay, lower back. So that's more like sacral chakra, root chakra area. And the back has to do with the past. So, and I would say, okay, well, right or left side, you know, it makes a big difference of like the controlling or receiving. It's probably like right in the middle. Like, right in the middle. Yeah. Okay, so trying to find balance between giving and receiving lower back, you know, and digestion that has to do with digestion and being rooted and grounded into your experience. And also the sex is right there too. So there's a lot of energy right there. Um, Interesting. But we would go in and I would really, try to tap in you're already (laughs) just like in it Uh (laughs) yes and then on top of that apply like some pressure and body work while you're breathing and then channeling and trying to find where it is and why it is and how come your body and back is holding on to this still you know interesting yeah but what was your zodiac remind me uh taurus okay so taurus is the throat the thyroid so a lot of speaking a lot of going so uh, obviously i are doing podcasts that's very good Um, (laughs) but i would probably go into your thyroid with your back and try to find a connection there and then also um search your moon sign and whatever your emotion and your moon sign is i would tap into that as well um do you know your moon no, I could probably ask Megan. She yeah, would know. she would know totally. Yeah, I'll text her and we'll yeah. see. Yeah, and then um, we could go off of your emotions there, and then get you tapped in and say, okay, well, what brings you emotion in life, Cody? What is it? You know, um, when was the last time you cried like a baby? Do you even remember? Cried? Yeah, I do actually. Okay. Um, I wouldn't have had this not just recently happened. Okay. Um, one second, what's my? So uh, I made the terrible decision to watch. Uh, um, Sound of Freedom on New Year's Eve with Megan. Okay. I haven't seen that one yet. I need to. Yeah, about the child trafficking. Yes. And there's a lot of people with opinions about um, Tim Blanchard and Underground Railroad and right. and whether he is or isn't good. I don't know him, so I have right. no idea. Sure. But what I know is he highlighted something that is real, which is child trafficking, yes. right? And this is a, a, a movie about real story, real life trafficking events. <sighs> And it, I mean, I, I sobbed like a little Good. baby Get it out. Um, Ooh, and that was like deep. devastating to watch. And I can't, I can't consciously remember actually, no, the last time I cried would have been when my, I had to put my lab down. Oh, uh, okay. But see, even in, even in life, I've had very limited losses that were not logical to me. Okay. Right. It's like my grandparents, when they passed, I had moved from where I grew up from. It's mm-hmm. so like, by the time my grandparents passed, I had like, I was so removed from from their lives yeah. right and i didn't like didn't talk affect you. yeah i didn't like i didn't cry, even cry when my yeah. grandparents died because it was like oh yeah like that makes sense it's, yeah it's their time to pass and good for them they oh. were at, at that stage of their life and it wasn't like they died in a car accident they, right it wasn't tragic you were able to process yeah so it just death and life. all my grandparents have passed now and i didn't i didn't cry at any of them it just felt really like peaceful and how yeah, it, it just felt like nothing honestly okay well, how were your parents were they okay um, I wasn't even around my parents. Well, my dad was fine actually because his grandmother died when he was in Houston with me, okay. and we just went on like just I had a regular okay, day. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it's like I haven't had 
that loss that like that you know, wrenches you. Yeah, just like how can I move on with this person? So the toughest loss of my life was really losing my lab. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's that's deep. Yeah. Those animals when I mean, they get us so good in the heart. Yeah. Oh. He was just such a great dog. And so that would have been prior to Sound of Freedom. And we put him okay. down um must have been the beginning of twenty twenty two, I think. Okay. So, and then the sound of freedom, like you just oh, were able to devastating stop. just because you see your own kids in that and yeah. like you can relate to like children and they're so innocent and then yeah. you just know how they're being shattered. And did you use your voice when you cried? Oh yeah. I try to teach people use your voice when you cry, you know, kids and babies, they use their voice. We're only taught not to use our voice as we get older and people are like shush that emotion. Yeah. Right. But the voice is what's going to attune your body to the deeper healing as you sob it out. Yeah, it was. And it was interesting because my son, my son won't like cry in front of me. Oh no. Like he really doesn't want to, you know, he will sometimes, but he really doesn't want to. And so he asked me like just a few months ago, like, dad, why, when do you cry? Like, when have you cried? You know, this is a beautiful moment. And what's interesting is I've never like, because some dads yeah. will tell their kids like don't cry yeah. like or boys don't cry or whatever and i've never like espoused that to him Good. but he really hasn't ever seen i don't know that he's ever seen me cry okay it would be probably really healthy for him too it's... i know but i I, it has to, I can't just manufacture <laughs> right. it you know like it has to organically happen <laughs> yeah and like when when rocky passed yeah. um we took him you know to put him down and but it was just megan and i like the kids weren't there for that you know okay. and like i had that last evening with him um and then sound of freedom they were asleep and i wouldn't okay. let them watch that anyway so it's did like did you tell your son that you cried did you say men and I think boys I did, cry yeah. all the time they're no different from girls yeah. and the emotions they need to process and i told him when he asked me like dude you can cry and i told him the story when i broke my collarbone when i was uh, 13 uh-huh. and i was like yeah i broke my collarbone doing a stupid skateboarding thing i was going to the grocery store to get my mom frosting did that, got home, and when I saw my mom, I cried. Oh. But I didn't until I saw her. So Isn't I, I, that something, how you yeah. can just see your parents, your mom especially, yeah. feel that nerve? Yeah, because I wouldn't have cried when I saw my held, dad. Right? You know? <laughs> so you need, my body needs to be held, and there's my mom, and oh, yeah, it's so good. And so it was interesting that, that he already had this instinctual desire to like, I, no, I'm going to use the word weak, even though I don't believe that to be so, but that's got to be the way he's. Yeah. perceiving it like right. oh my dad's gonna think i'm weak if and i cry like, which no which i wouldn't you know yeah. no so i don't no know where way. that comes from um the conditioning of this okay so men like they're innately just here so much to feel like they need to sustain and provide it's so innate inside of you sure. guys and so i think there's an amount of pressure that goes on to that where you just keep going and going and building and building and you don't even realize the nurture and the nourishment that you're lacking and yeah. and the pressure that's been built up and that it's there because you guys are just so for provision and providing and and so i love the then when you can find that balance and and feel like you know you and you need some nourishment and let the yeah. woman hold you or whatever you need your mother or Megan to hold you and let go or when you watch a movie and release that pressure that's built up because as women it's really more innately in us to nourish and yeah um, so the emotion's easier for us to process well and you said something too about how you um broke into tears when that person asked you if you're okay you right, know right. and so on this podcast you know I've, I've had a shocking and alarming amount of people talk about suicidal thoughts yes and it was like and it's the scariest part about it was like wow it's only because we've like connected for 60 minutes right. so like where you were just a simple question of That's how right. are you away from a breakdown right. how many like how many people are in our lives are a 60 minute conversation away from sharing like oh i'm really really struggling you know that and you never see it that and you never see it and that's what really i was actually in a suicidal moment all in this time period i oh, was really? in my bathroom uh huh in my bathtub specifically i was bawling my eyes out bawling my eyes. i was seeing how my funeral was going to go i had a gun with me like an actual gun an actual gun i was oh, ready to God. commit suicide i thought the bathtub would be the best place right because the be- better cleanup like i was trying to think it through a that's little amazing because someone else shared a suicidal story yeah. and they said that they were in the shower with their gun okay for the same reason same which reason. isn't it wild to that's think that like the logicalness that you're using right. i want to provide easy cleanup for in this terribly emotional moment anymore yeah and it, wow it, and so in that i could really see how um uh, I just, I could see my funeral, I could see it all, and I realized um, I'm creating this. I'm creating all of this. I'm creating how people are seeing me. I'm creating the hurt. Um, am I okay? 
yeah, I can be okay and I can change instantly. In this moment, I had just like consciousness come in. So I had a rebirth. I didn't have to die. Um, but it was, it definitely felt like I did re be reborn and where was rebirth. Is that what pulled you out of it then? Yes. Yes. And I, oh my gosh, so much. I realized I was creating my reality. I was creating the hurt. I was creating how I was feeling. And it brought me to so much understanding for others hurt that I never wanted anyone to feel this way. I said, Oh my God, I thought, Oh my gosh. So back to the suicide moment of why people just always feel this way that I, everyone feels this way at some point in their life, like this despair. Yeah. I don't want anyone to ever feel what I was feeling in that moment. So I just want to be light for everybody else. And that's what kind of changed that. So are you ultimately saying like the, your aha was that like ultimately you're in control of all of your thoughts, feelings, and actions. So right. it's like if you feel this way, it's a reflection right. of you. And right. so it, you can obviously, if it's you, if you're responsible for the way you're feeling, then you can, Change you yourself it. can fix it. Yes. So I called up everyone I knew immediately and I was like, hey, I am so sorry because I had created quite a bit of drama in my life about the things I thought I was hurt about. Yeah. And I'm, I said, I'm so sorry. I'm a new person. I love you so much. Let's go from here. Um, because I just never wanted anyone to feel the way I was feeling. And I didn't want anyone to um, create these feelings because they thought of me in any way at yeah. all. And I knew it, everything's a mirror. So if I was creating this about myself, other people were perceiving it about me. And um, I just didn't want anyone to feel these feelings of despair. So I wanted to become light for everyone around me. And that's what I well, chose. And you're the first woman to share that on the podcast so far. Okay. So I think that's good that you've opened oh, that door you. for yeah. people to feel comfortable to share that. And uh, what would you say? Was there one driving factor in that, like that depression state that got you there? Or was it just accumulation of just life? It was an accumulation of life. When I look back on it now, it was accumulation of just unconscious um, patterns and moments that I chose into continuously. And then leaving the Mormon church, I left the Mormon church yeah. and leaving the Mormon church, you know, it really puts you in a place where people around you who are still in the church don't want anything to do with you. And you think you're really left out and you think there's no more love for you. And I found out through leaving the church that my family loves me no matter what, if whether I'm yeah. in the church or not. And so that was really great for me to realize is that I'm loved regardless. And, um, I didn't need religion to access my spirituality and I'm the most spiritual person I know and non-religious. So I love that I'm able to kind of bridge where, and I, I love um, religion. If that is what you need to access your spirituality, yeah. I, I like applaud it. And I'm so grateful if someone can receive the feelings and connections of God that um, I have through religion. Like, I just love that. Um, so when you, so when you say God, that's the yeah. words that you use for it. Yeah. God, God, creator, connection, consciousness, love source. So yeah. you're not tied to a no. vernacular. So when uh, you say you're religious, like do you go to church or no, no, I'm not religious, but I'm very spiritual. Got it. Okay. So I'm non-religious, but the most spiritual person I, I feel like I'm aware of and know of is myself. Um, so what do you believe? Oh, I believe that in universal consciousness, I believe that we are infinite, where um, this consciousness of yours keeps going and going and going. So you believe in like multiple lives? Yeah, but I also, so it's like a theory, like I just like to theorize on it all. Sure. What I feel and what I can come to in deep meditation is this universal oneness, this consciousness that we all have individually here, but really it's like one consciousness. So as many lives as there have been, you have lived. Um, you, if you have access to channel um, and create and see through the eyes of everything, um, you can channel and live any life and try to see anything that's been created through your oneness. So then if I'm hearing you right, yeah. multiple lives yeah. and there's, and, and if you are willing to tap into yeah. that source, then you can pull things from, from any past or potentially future experiences and use them in the experience. Yeah. Use yes. them in the life that you have today. Yes. Yeah. I believe in multiple lives for sure. Right. Yeah. Oh man. It's yeah. It's good to tap into and to try to tap into your infinite source that word, because this infinite existence just continues and continues. So if you can try to um, break free of the conditions that this is just matter, right? Mind over matter, break free of that. That veil comes then. Um, oh, gosh, I just had a thought that I wanted to ask you about on that on that topic. Mm -hmm. And now I had a, okay, a maybe it will come back. Yeah, maybe it will. Um, the cleaner the cells in the body, the more you can tap into that. 
I believe that. So that's what got me into cleansing too. And then realizing the energy work and the cleansing together is, okay, if I want to access more spirituality or connection to God and source and um, create my own reality and really magnetize here, then I need to have clean, I need to have clean cells. I need to clear up the things that are Yeah, all the down. toxicity inside of yes. you. What's interesting is so obviously my wife and I did it and then my dad did it and my sis, yes. sister did it. Um and my dad, me and Megan all had good experiences, but Sarah had a terrible experience. Like okay. it put her in so much pain and agony. And like, she was at my house after the fact, or maybe in the last day of, yeah. um, and ended up having to eat. Cause, she, and, and I think hers was like emotional stuff. Very emotional. When right. It's hard like and that, so yes. it was like emotional trauma that she probably had yet to process. Yeah. And yeah. so I think that that, and my, that's, what's funny is I shared that story with my friends and they're like, wait a minute. So you're telling me that some of the parasites are, are tied to you emotionally. And I was like, I think so. That's the only reason why they're hanging on. Yeah. The body is amazing. It will flush yeah. these guys because parasites lay 300 eggs per day just in your tissue. Ew. Your body is constantly flushing out. That's what your lymphatic system's for. It's taking the secretions of the parasites because they're pooping and peeing in your body as yeah. well, right? And laying all these eggs. So your limbs are constantly just flushing and flushing and flushing and flushing. So the only reason why the parasites are able to stick and stay and grow is because you're emotional about something that you're not letting go of. Or there's been a pattern or trauma in your body and you're just hanging on and you don't even know maybe you're hanging on until you try to let go like well Sarah and did. yeah so i think hers was and, and i really believe that right i don't know the science behind it but that's just what i thought like right. i can tell you have stuff you have to work on still so right. these things did not want to leave you because they are like too right tied to you and i wonder like you know because sometimes we have these desires that uh for food or or substance alcohol whatever yes. that we know is not serving of us right right but who is it that really wants it? And so then I wonder, this is what I think, this is my philosophy, you tell me what you think. But so what I believe is that these parasites are, are a part of our body. And so they, I believe that they can send, you know, energy is a frequency. Yes. And so, you know, obviously animals have ways of communicating with, with each other that isn't vocal. Right. And so I believe parasites have that same way. So are they like energetically, like let's say that this particular parasite yeah. like thrives on alcohol. Right. So is that parasite then sending like an F frequency? pathways into your body yes, to say, that's hey, like, let's drink tonight. I haven't had any alcohol in a couple of days. Like yeah. I need it to survive. To and then you're like, oh, that's weird. I feel like a drink. Yes. And so it's like, are they part of our our, our desire for what we know to be consciously yes n not good habits great theory and i believe that yeah absolutely and especially yeah the the toxic foods that we are constantly why why can't we get rid of this why can't i stop eating this sugar oh because there's a family of parasites and they're thriving off of it they need it to survive and not only that they'll poop and pee in your body and create headaches if you try to go you know when you try to detox off yeah, of something uh -huh. you get headaches yeah it's because the parasites are dying so they're creating massive a Oh, like secretions. Secretions to get you to eat. And so wow. when you can go, admit, like if you can go 24 hours of fasting, you're allowing so many parasites to die. And then not only that, when you fast 24 hours, stem cells are uh, rapidly releasing. And stem cells are the cells that you want. Stem cells are the cells that go into the parts of the body that repair. Um, and so if you can starve the body and the parasites for a minimum of 24 hours, you're not only killing off a ton of parasites and eggs, but you're also releasing stem cells. And these stem cells are going out and killing out more. And Interesting. So that's why people have those health benefits from yes. fasting because yes. really what they're doing is killing parasites. They're killing parasites and then releasing yeah, stem cells. So, wow, that's yes, fascinating. Fasting is so beneficial for the body. How often do you practice that? I'm actually on a fast right now. I break it tomorrow. Um, I I did a fast last week before I went out, out of town. I went. I did a three day fast. Wow. Do you um, just having water still though? Obviously. Yeah, I have water because I work out a lot. I do aminos as well. I take aminos if I choose to fast and work out. Yeah. I'll do some aminos. Do you? Are you particular on the water you drink? And distilled water only, and I've only been drinking distilled water probably for a good six, seven years. I can't remember who I was listening to, but someone was just talking about like how terrible the tap water is, you yeah, know? If you can avoid, I would at all costs, I would never drink tap water. <laughs> yeah, so I've, ever, I've stopped ever. at my, at our office, there's, um, uh, there's a water fountain that everyone like fills their stuff up in. And I'm like, guys, yeah, no, don't no, drink no. that. No. Yeah. I can't believe I used to do that. Like, Oh, water fountain. Let me fill my water bottle. Um, no, don't. Oh, ever. someone was telling a story about the fluoride and like how they originally put it in the water that like the government had like a surplus of it. And they were like, oh, they didn't know what to do with it. So they, put it in the water. Yeah. And then they were like, well, we can't really stop now because. And now realizing how much money they're making off of big pharma and doing so they're keeping on 
putting, you know, all of the things in our water. It's hard because if you have good intention, it's difficult for people who haven't like done any due diligence right. to believe that like, right. that all these entities are out to get us. Right. But it's like, you just got to follow the money. You have to follow the money and you realize really quickly that it, it's a game here. Like you can look at it as a game or computing system. And if you can see past the little things that bog you down, you're going to level up and you're going to get to the next level. And you're going to feel that much better. A, and you're going to see that much clearer and you're going to be able to move through your life that much easier. That's funny because you, we talked about like desires. And so when we did my cleanse, um, so with you, we did the 10 day, yeah. no food, just the, a gallon of distilled water every day. Yes. Um, and then you could have organic fruits yes. and then you had a couple like pureed soups you could have. And yeah. we ended up having like a couple couple of those towards the end, which yes. were really good. Right? Yeah. The soups are good. It, it seems like you're eating baby food, but it tastes good, <laughs> you know? Good. Yeah. Um, yeah. The diet specific so that it doesn't, because eating cooked foods will dehydrate you. And so, and we're constantly as a society, everything is processed, cooked, done, yeah. dried out. And so the, the whole point of eating all organic fruit during this is because what the body does with food when you eat all it wants to do is have the water so it's squeezing out all of the water yeah. that it can in food and so um, it's so beneficial to eat organic fruit because organic fruit is 90% mineral water and it's fibrous not um, sugarous the sugar processes into fiber into the body which a lot of people don't realize and understand um, so the the body just wants mineral water. We run on water and 27 different minerals. So if you can do that and get that through your food, the most beneficial you'll have is with raw foods and fruit. Raw foods like vegetables, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, would there be parasites and vegetables too? Cause yeah, you want to wash them. Um, and same with your fruit, but the parasites that are going to be found, there versus something that is like in me are very different. Okay. The body is able to sustainably flush out those so much easier than, than a parasite that's been in, you know, living already in a, an or a human uh, yeah, mammal a living with organism. an endocrine system that has emotions. And if you think about the, this is just interesting to think about the slaughterhouses and the generations, like these slaughterhouses are, you know, 20, 30 years old yeah. and the generations of cows that are going through there, the, their blood and their genetics and their DNA that you're ingesting and absorbing yeah. into your body, they're emotionally sure. sad, you know, that's a torturous place to, so yeah, I have, I would avoid eating factory farming um, completely if you're able. You'd probably avoid me anyways, right? Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. I'm a gift given. Yeah. Given. I try to be fruitarian. Um, that's my goal is to eat fruit um, as much as I can and then raw foods like salad. Just fruit, ideally. I really try, yes. Um, but what was interesting is so as I went through this cleanse, like when I started, I was like, oh, when I'm done, I can't wait to get like in and out or like whatever, <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. But as I was in it, I was like, oh, you know what sounds good? It's like a good salad. Like yes. my body started to want different things. Right. It wasn't like I, because I've done other things where after you're like Taco Bell or whatever, right. you know, yeah, but doing yourself. this, it, it was different. And the only reason I could attest to that was those, those parasites that were sending those bad desirable signals, you know, had, right. had moved on and moved on. That's kind of made me believe that. Yes, absolutely. And then you, yeah, you get done with the cleanse and you're like, wait, I don't, I don't want the hamburger that I thought I would at the end of the yeah. the cleanse. No, I actually really don't because, because you, you see them coming out of you. And you're yeah. Like, I don't want these parasites anymore. And yeah. It was so interesting. So let's talk. We haven't really gotten into the cleanse specific yet. So why don't you okay. tell the, the listeners yeah. what that process looks like? Like how do you execute this cleanse? Okay. So the cleanse is specific to 10 days because we like to get over into the right hip area where the small intestine and colon attach through the appendix and that's okay. right in the right hip. And this is why a lot of people have, especially men, they have right mm. hip problems and because of the dip that happens and then the houses and metals that are able to be created. Dip? Like it's like a dip that the colon and intestine oh, do okay, down gotcha. in the body and it has to dip and then rise back up in order to come out. And so in order for the, so specifically, that's why like we stuff do gets 10 stuck days. in the bottom of the dip. Yep. That exactly. Makes sense. So it's like if you think of a pipe, it'd be harder for yes, it to move back like up. Yes, it's just like that. And so when, uh, this is why, and the right hip is all has to do with, um, being okay for change moving forward in life. And, um, that's why we do for 10 days because the, to, in order to get over all the way into that right hip, it takes 10 days of colon hydrotherapy to clean out. And every so in every day, the colon is able to go a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper. And each part of the colon is specific to a different part of the body. And you're saying with the enemas. 
Yes. Yeah. With the enemas or if you come to me for a, so we have three different options to choose from right now for the cleansing for the 10 days. You can do an in-home kit where it's all at home and you have an enema bag. It comes in the kit and the regimen and a how to, and then you have the basic and, or the advanced, the basic, you come to me every single day with the in-home regimen. Then you come to me every single day for about an hour. You do colon hydrotherapy instead of your enema. And then we do it. That's on that special bed. Yes. The special bed. And so 45 minute process where it's gravity fed and it's an open bed system and it just goes in slowly and then you you know as the water goes in the fecal matter and the parasites and heavy metals come out yeah and i'll, I'll talk about this for a second so yes. i can give the audience my perspective yes. so we did um we did the at home we did the at home enemas also my first enema i'd never done enema in my life right, right? bravo and the first one oh my god the pain <laughs> Aww, like pressure you know i never understood you know i couldn't understand what a period feels like Aww. and this probably still isn't adequate but, but the pain in your stomach oh man i was like Oh, I was writhing in pain. Oh. It took me so long to get through that bag because so like good. I had to keep stopping it, you know? Yes. And I was just like, this can't be like this. Right. It, that was only the first day though. And that's typical for the yeah. first time. And you realize all the cramping and the things that are hard that have been yes. sitting in there for so long. Right. But once the water cleans it out and you get it out, you can go deeper and deeper and it feels better and better. Yeah. And, and better. then it like towards the end, it wasn't even like a thing. It yeah. was just like, it yeah, just sat no, there and there was no problem. The, I mean, now you go, I can go for eight minutes now on my um colon, my colonic bed. Eight minutes as the water's going in me without ever filling it. And then about eight minutes, I start really feeling it and I have to push out. Yeah. Yeah, but so I can get really deep. That was the other part. So then I do the bed. So you get on this bed. It's made for it. It's like your feet are up and yep. and your there's a bucket or you know, a hole, not a bucket, but a hole for your, your feces to go. And then what was interesting is like because the water's in you. And I was thinking like, <laughs> how is it going to get out? And the water thing's going to stay there. But it just moves around. It. And it's so you've moved. got this like um, like one of those muscle. Yes. The like therapy. tenderizers, their guns. Yes. And so I'm doing it on my stomach. And then you, this is the craziest part for me. Yeah. Is you find it and you're right. like, oh. That hurts right there. Like that's painful. Mm -hmm. And you just hold that Theragun on it and then you feel it pass and then you feel it release. And it's like, and then it's like this like euphoric, like, oh, it feels so good. It's out of me. But that blew my mind because I didn't know what to expect. And so as I've got that Theragun on my abdomen and you can, you find it. Like, so then you know, like, wow, there's this thing there. And it's almost like you're hunting in a sense, (laughs) right? Uh And then, and then you, you and then you eliminate it. it. It's the craziest. And those big releases and those ones that hurt are the big, like big the nest. housing yeah. nest, uh-huh. the big parasites. Yeah. And it's it's the crazy it's the craziest feeling ever, isn't it? And then it when it's out and you feel so good and you're done. I've had so many people immediately have emotional releases with those big like hurt releases, and they'll and they'll immediately start crying. Interesting, because the emotion just has to leave your body. It has yeah. no choice. So it's really good. See, because we did ours, so we did that with you. I think on the fifth day, mm-hmm. and then we came back and did another one on the tenth day. Yes, yes. So, and then the advanced, the, if you do an advanced cleanse with me, you do the regimen at home, but then you're coming with to see me every single day for 10 days, but you're with me about two hours and two of the days you're with me for four hours. So with you, if you're on the advanced cleanse, we're doing all the modalities. You're coming and we're doing an ionic foot bath every day, frequency therapy every day, vibrational therapy every day, ozone water therapy every day. We bioscan you. Um, I get you on the PMF grounding mats. And um, then what else? We do an energy session. So we, okay. uh, and every day is like a mini energy session. I want to know how you're feeling. We do yeah. breath work. We move energy through. We talk deep about your childhood, your past, what you've gone through and what you're going through So if through you're now. doing the advanced, it's like a full it's a rebirth. therapeutic. Yeah. It is. Cleanse. It is. That's probably what Sarah should have done. It, yes. Because if you have a lot of emotions to let go of, then yeah, that one is, is the best one. It's And then I do all of the cleanses on a full moon. I like to do them on a full moon. That's when we have the best results. Parasites are more active on a full moon. The water rises in the body during a full moon. Emotions are extra. Interesting because people say like they have a hard time sleeping on a full moon. Right. Is that because the yes. parasites They're are like so active in their active. body? Oh, yes. interesting. And that's why people in emotional, like emotions get really brought up during full moons. Um, so what are the different costs like the at home, the middle? So the at home is three thirty three. You get the okay. kit, the kit, the cleanse, everything you need to do at home for three thirty three. And if someone listening, because we have listeners all over, even yeah. all over the world, yes. right? So if you're listening to this and you're like, "Why well, don't I'm not in Southern Utah?" Yes. They can do the at home 
on their own. Absolutely. I'll and ship it to where them. do they go to, to get that? So what's amazing is I was creating a Shopify account last night because I've just been blowing <laughs> up of so many orders. And I'm like, okay, I need to do, do this. Yeah. And my goal is to get a website two years ago, but I am so busy. Yeah. I just it snowballed and snowballed and snowballed. And so, but yeah, you can contact me um, by the time this podcast is out. I'm sure Should the link up. will be. Okay. Yeah. And then they can just go online, order a kit. So and, you just let me know if that link comes out when it does, once Perfect. you have it, because then the, this episode won't come out for like six weeks. Okay. So then Amazing. we'll be able to add the link to the show notes. If you're listening, if it's up, it's down there. If it's yes. not, I'll at least have your Instagram and yes. so they can follow you and, and get updates there. Thank so you, you said the, the at home was how much? It's 333. 333. Okay. And then the basic cleanse would be coming to see me every day for colon hydrotherapy plus you get the in-home kit and that is 1888. 1888. And the, what'd you call that one? Um, that's the basic. Basic, okay. And then the advanced cleanse. And you have to be in Southern Utah for that, You though. do. Okay. You do. You have to see me every single day. And the property that I'm on, it actually, we have Airbnbs. You can come stay on the property for 10 days if you're coming oh, from so, out of town. Okay, so you could just make a... Mm-hmm. It could be like a... Um, what do they call that? There's a, a type of tourism, um, like medical tourism, right? Yeah. Where you go Health somewhere and, come and get yep. detox okay, for that's 10 a great days. idea. Well, and there's just uh, Southern Utah is amazing. There's right. so many great things to do. Okay, right. so that's your basic. And then the advanced is 2888, and that is full rebirth, full reset. You get so many modalities every single day. We really work um, your body. And so, and again, I have an array of clients and I have people who are stage four and people who are healthy as can be, but want to keep continue. All of these people want to regenerate and live a long time. And so if you're looking to do that, this is like one of the best ways to do that. Um, also, the when I have my Shopify link up, a lot of people are obsessed with the binder. The binder is, we yeah. call it black gold. It's a colon sweeper. It's a colon cleaner. Um, it allows the body to squeeze out, you know, all of the the mineral water from your food. And then this just pulls out all of the waste. Yeah. And so you take this an hour um, before or after you've eaten food. You have to wait an hour. And you take that and that just binds and pulls everything out. And then the parasite tincture is another one that people always continuously buy. These are my big sellers. The that was the tea. Tea. Yes. Yeah. The tincture, the kidney tea, and the binder. And um, the that's all organic herbs that I use and I make everything myself. And the parasite tincture is amazing. And that's what kills them. It's what kills them. And I'm like, so. Little bastards. Little, little bastards. <laughs> little motherfuckers. <laughs> you know? These little creatures and bugs. Living off my us. body. I didn't give them permission yes. to be in my body. And the second you start taking this, you are you notice that it becomes more like slimy when, you know, you're going through your process and eliminating yeah, it. Yeah, it is because slimy. It's because parasites are gummy. They're flesh and their nests are fleshy and slimy. So you know when your shit starts getting slimy, you're pulling out really good things. Oh, such a crazy experience. I know. Um, it is, if you are listening to this and you are interested, I'm telling you, you got to do it. I felt so good. Thank you. And, and yes. you know, that was so no caffeine, no food, yes. um, just the fruits uh, that we were eating. But man, did I feel so great. Like I didn't have that, like the headache or the withdrawals Probably because, again, I was killing the parasites, but like it didn't, I didn't feel that way at all. Good. And especially as you're very regulated in your emotions, right? So you're able to just be like, this is it. And this is my intention. This is what I want to do. And I I do notice people who set intentions and then they're ready to do it. They release so much and they're fine. They're they're like, I'm fine. I'm doing it. People who aren't really ready and they're just like scared of it and they have a lot of emotions to release. You know, we have a lot of handholding that we do and walk you through it and try to get you know, to you to release as good as you can. I just worked with a family last full moon. I had the mother who was 80, her two daughters, they were like 50, 40 and 50, and then one of their daughters. So I had an entire, um, an entire three generation work with me. And it was beautiful to see each day how each of them were releasing, how similar and a little bit of what differences and what they each needed to move through. And, you know, they're all so attached to each other. So they had a lot of things to move through emotionally with each other as well. And so it was really neat to watch them all as a group and unit heal. Um, Oh, yeah. Well, we even had our daughter do it too, just at home. That's that's my sign. Megan just sent that to me. There's two pictures there, I think. Okay. Oh, here we go. Yes. Oh, so your moon's also in Taurus. So you're a double Taurus. Wow. So you have a lot of emotions sitting in your thyroid. And then you ascend in Cancer. Oh, so home and family means so much to you. I love that. Your midheaven, Mercury, beautiful. Oh, your chart's amazing. 
No wonder you're makes doing, sense. No, it makes sense. And no wonder you're so successful and you're speaking out to the world and doing this podcast thing. Yeah. Um, so I like that. That's awesome. But so your emotions sit in your thyroid. And I found that Taurus is harder for me to crack with emotions. And uh, Interesting. people with Taurus moons, yeah, or people with Aries moons are really hard to crack emotionally as well. You're just a lot in your head. You're all up here. Yeah. So much of it is logical, right? Like, right. like I said, my parents, when, when my grandparents passed, it was like, well, yeah. Yeah, like it makes they sense. lived their life and now yeah. it was time it was over you know what's interesting is the deepest fear though i can find in everyone is always in their thyroid like we remove fear throughout the whole body but the deepest and scariest fear for almost everyone i found in the thyroid what do you mean by that ah uh, just most anxiety and but what do you mean that it's there like that's where you have to release like, it from yeah it's just sitting so deep in there that you don't even know and it's just cries and cries and cries and wanting to be held and feeling safe. But, and it's this interesting thing because the energy has thing to pass too. through the thyroid to get to the brain you and just, then back down. You just said being safe, yes. right? And I, I just went to the speaker training and it was in the Northeast and so they're a little bit, um, you know, more sensitive maybe there. I don't know what the word would be, but sure. they kept saying about like, we, we're going to create a safe environment. And I kept being like, what a weird thing to say. Like, why wouldn't it be safe? Like the fact that they on multiple occasions said that said how there it was a safe environment. And then someone at the end of the class um, raised their hand and they're like, I just appreciate how safe you made it. Aww. And to me, I was like, what the hell are you guys talking you guys about? Don't feel safe all the time. Like, what? 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 <laughs> what is this thing of safety? Like we're in a, a like a room with other professionals. Like what? I don't know what they mean when they say safe. What's well, wild when someone's processing their emotions and they're shedding and letting go, it's they're so shaky and they don't feel safe. Like they don't feel safe in their reality. Who am I? What am I? What am I going through? What is life? You know, do I trust this process? Um, and so feeling safe, it's, it's so deep in the thyroid. Such an interesting thing. I can't think of like, Outside of like being on a cliff or yes. I'm afraid of heights and stuff. So like yeah. I get that safety, yeah. right? You've never been threatened for or, life or anything yeah, like, to where you're like, mom, help. Being on a roller coaster, that feels unsafe. Yes. Like when I was a kid, my mom made me terrified of everything. So like I was afraid of kidnappings okay. and, and ghosts and things like that sense of unsafe. But right. not in like a well-lit room in the middle of the day with 60 other professionals, right. you know? Yeah, sure. I, it's interesting. But they felt it, obviously, because yeah. they felt the need to profess that it was safe. And then other people appreciated the safety. And I think when people do feel safe in life, you know, there's a connection that can be had and a grounding that can happen in their bodies. And then, you know, you're able to digest. I trust. I trust. Yeah. But when you don't feel safe, anxiety happens. Even if you're unconscious to it, your body's holding tension. It's just like, yeah. Oh. And that's something, too. I don't have uh, a lot of anxiety either. It's not it's something so that nice. I... I really struggle with. That's good. I feel like most people do. Yeah. And, and it, that comes a lot too with diet and just perceptions of, and, but trust and safety is a, is one of the biggest things for a human to be able to feel good in and to keep going. Cause I think a lot of us get confused. Like, what is this thing again that we're in a body, but I'm thinking yeah. I, think I die eventually. Um, what the fuck? <laughs> and then it, it can the go purpose. so much fear. Yeah. yeah, it can start being just riddled. And I did understand up to a degree, right? Because like we were being vulnerable, and people were getting on stage, and yes. and that's terrifying, that's especially true. when you know like these these theater professionals are going to critique you in front of a group of your peers, right. and also like there's so much room for improvement. So like they're critiquing you like, Oof. you know, Oof. and so. And that, and to feel safe and being able to speak, right? Yes. All uh -huh. in the thyroid and the speaking and being, like, I don't know if what I'm saying is going to be perceived well and I'm getting vulnerable up here. Well, and, and there was, and there's some fear, right? And, and I, and I guess you could equate safety to fear there, but yes. there was a fear of like when the first person went and then it was like, they're like, boom, 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 boom. Then you're like, ooh, do I want to raise my hand? You know? <laughs> and you had to have that internal struggle. And it was amazing to see because in a room of 60 people who were there to become professional speakers. Yeah. And they asked you to raise your hand. I bet you 30, only 30% 30 of the room raised their hand. Okay. Which is so interesting, That's logically, interesting. because it's like, how do you want to be a speaker? Like, You got to get vulnerable. Yeah, you're you going to have to raise your hand so and talk. Vulnerable. It's funny. When we were, uh, I was going to Florida with Spencer, um, uh, one of my coworkers for us, a marketing event, and we were in the Salt Lake uh, um, airport, and there was a bunch of missionaries getting ready to go on their missions. And okay. this group of guys in front of us were going to Brazil, and um, we had got we do the stupid thing, and the officer would go like, "Yeah, yeah," like singing, and so we did it, and then we're like, "Hey, do it to the missionary," and he's like, "No." Oh. And I was like, no, dude, oh. like if you if you can't say yeah, yeah in an airport, right. how are you going to go in a stranger's home and right. sell them God? You know, like you better get ready to get uncomfortable. Better, and right. And it's all about speaking yeah. and because we're, we're scared to speak what we think and our truth and how we're going to be received and perceived. And 
you know that makes a lot of sense liked? so a lot there's so much fear here in it's the interesting show. how talking can get you to an understanding because when you said it at first i didn't get it but as we spent five minutes on it it's, it's like oh yeah that yeah. makes sense i could see that yeah and then speaking truth is the biggest thing for people it's like when i'm processing with people and their energy and their emotions like just stepping into their power and saying this is who i am and this is what i need and i'm okay to say no or yes or this or that it's so hard for people well i think most people probably don't live in their truth because they live in the in the perception that they believe they're supposed to be yes, absolutely. right or the role they're supposed to follow that's right. probably a lot of what your trauma was as you went through that crisis of right. identity right, right? Yes. leaving this thing that was so such a part of that. you and and that thing and, 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 and the relationship dynamics that exist, right? So it's so it's so it's so sad that we can as a people fall into these roles that we never even wanted. Right. But then once you're in the role for so long, you don't know how to leave. We're it. so conditioned in it and so it feels safe. Yeah. It feels so safe because that's all we know. When we step out of it, all of a sudden everything gets shaky. We don't know this. It's not safe. We we have to create that safety. We have to step into it and we have to create the patterns and be like, okay, I'm okay over here. It just feels different. And um it takes, you know, 12 days, what is it? 12 days to break a cycle, 21 days, 12 days to create a cycle, 21 days to break it. So if you can oh, stick with something for 12 days, you're going to start feeling safe. You know, your interesting. Body. That's yeah. a good statistic. Right. Um, so is there any lead time that you need for any of these courses? Like if someone's like listening to this, like, oh, I want to do the advanced. Is yeah. that like, are you already pretty well booked out? Like yeah, that's how far question. out in advance? So right now I'm, I have like one more spot for the March full moon. I'm booking, I'm booking April right now and the rest of the year okay. for full moons. So by the time this comes out, you're probably booking like May. Yeah. April, May. Yeah. May, okay. June. So, um, yeah, it's really good stuff. I'm uh, excited. Did you ever think you'd be doing this? <laughs> Not, no. If you would have asked me 10, 15 years ago, I'd be like, what? No way. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah. Um, it's neat how it's all kind of come together. But no, I never thought I would be the person I am today. Um, my old self. Oh, one thing I do want to talk about before we leave yes. is, um, you had told me when I came and did this with you about the bed that you have yeah, and that it used to be in all the hospitals. Yes. So share that story because i found that fascinating okay so before fdr was in office before the fda was ever a thing um in hospitals there was a colonic bed in every hospital and when you came in with any sort of disease or discomfort what did they do they put you on the colonic bed to clean out your colon first because all disease starts in the colon if you plug the colon up the whole body shuts down so um you so that's what they used to do but when fdr came into office the fda was put into place big pharma was put in place and so the first thing they did was take those out so because they're like we're a money making business here and we're not going to have as many customers the millions of customers that they want yeah right to what they're creating if we're going to heal people really so um it yeah, there you I just found that to be so hospital, fascinating because yeah. like that can solve so many things, so many things, right? But then they remove it, and now like, like I'd never even heard of it or seen it before. Like yeah. I didn't even know that as like an option for right. health, you I know? know. And it, they, I, it's interesting. Um, but it makes sense because your colon yeah. is your trash can, yeah. really. Yeah. And so imagine if you never, like, if, if a city never took their trash out and it just right. build and build and build and build and build. Um, what happens? Congestion happens, and then eventually just which should should ever everyone would die in the city yeah the trash built up that much um and so and the disease would be so rampant right exactly and um oh is i going to speak to that about oh when people are sick when they call aaron i have this aaron what do i do what herb do i take um i'll take your binder go do an enema Oh, and immediately they're like, okay, I'm better next yeah. day. You know, I have had moms who are like, hey, I can't get my son be- or my daughter better. And I've been sick for a month. What do I do? Have them take the binder. Okay. And then they become better the next day. Um, just yeah, have to move amazing. things through your colon that are sitting there creating disease, discomfort, um, parasites that create candida, parasites that- What's create- candida? So candida is a buildup of bacteria in the body. When they're in a specific bacteria and it, it festers and grows and it becomes yeasty. And that's when like people have like yeast infections. Oh, and, I got it. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's just so many different types of parasites creating all different types of disease in the body. You have a disease, guarantee you have a parasite. Do we get all of our parasites through food? Or is there other ways that you get it too? There's other ways you can get parasites just by, because their eggs are so microscopic yeah. that you can get them from touching things or from touching people. Like if you were people. barefoot on the beach where there's like animal feces or something like that. Yeah. You, and or touching people or dealing with people if they have, you know, parasites around their sinus or their eyes or anywhere in their bodies or anything like that. Um, so best way to be conscious about parasites. Obviously you do the cleanse, but like yeah. in your day-to-day life, what are the what are the best things that the listeners can do 
to limit their exposure to parasites. Okay, so parasites feed on specifically sugar. Okay. And dairy. They love sugar and dairy Interesting. and processed foods. So eliminate those two. Uh-huh. And everyone I think who has ever eliminated sugar or dairy for any amount of time will say how much better they feel. Right. And I'm talking processed sugars, cane sugars, yeah, you know, right. very high fructose sugars, yeah. things like that. So if you can eliminate those, that's going to help you so much. Um, um, and then avoiding... It's funny, as parasites are just like us. They love dairy and sugar just they like we do. They love it. They're like, yeah, yeah. It makes us <laughs> feel high, <laughs> yeah. high on life for just a moment, you know? Um, and then if you can avoid... I, I would avoid meats coming from like fast foods, yeah. restaurants. Uh, if you're going to eat meat, make sure it's high quality. Make sure you know the source. Uh, prepare your own food. There's deep, deep, deep healing and happening when it's just like prepare and have an intention into yeah. your food. And then tell your body, hey, body, flush out my parasites because you're the conductor, you're the coder, you're the creator of everything that's happening. And your body's listening and waiting for what to do. So just tell your body, hey, all the parasites can be flushed out because no matter what, we'll always be this living organism and there's going to be bacteria and things, yeah. you know, an ecosystem inside of us. So um, if you can talk to your body and tell your body what to do, it will definitely assist you in that. I love that. Well, I know like when I did it with you on your bed, you, yeah. I had one that was like a parasitic yeah. or uh, prehistoric, I think is what you said. Um, petrified. Petrified. That's the word. The yeah. petrified ones are, I mean, depending on how hard they are, will determine how long they've been inside yeah, you. Yeah, you said it probably been in me since I was a kid. Yes, because it was so hard. I mean, that's crazy Isn't to that think about. Crazy? You've just been carrying around that baggage for all that time. Oh my gosh. I've had rope worms that are so petrified that are like this big i mean the big worm you have up there on the shelf this that one? came out of a 14 year old that's like a 40 inch oh my lord yeah ew so you can imagine if she hadn't cleaned that out when she was 14 what yeah. that would have been like when she's 40 man that is just absolutely wild isn't that well, Aaron, this has been awesome. Thank you um, people have heard me talk about it in so many capacities, like so many times. So it's <laughs> great to, to have it right from the source. And, out on it. and I don't think people would ever imagine like what it like what it really is, you know? Right. Um, so all the non-believers, hopefully that I've converted them. Well, I have had so many non-believers. I've had people to my face tell me that what I'm saying and doing isn't real. Oh, yeah. No, so, for sure. People, okay. there's people out there who think it's like a fraudulent thing. Uh-huh. It's like interesting that you think Aaron is lying to you, <laughs> but yet you trust like the grocery stores, right. like Kellogg's. You trust right. Kellogg's. They've, right. They're have they giving you a balanced diet. But Aaron, she's a scammer, you know. <laughs> oh, it's so great. That one's huge. And that's a, that's, so that's a liver stone. Oh, wow. So during the basic and advance, you get a liver flush, and we usually get anywhere from 50 to 300 stones out of every person. How many? 50 to 300. If I'm not at least That live getting, in your liver? Yes. If And gall, and gallbladder. Oh, my God. And if God. I'm not at least getting like 50 stones out of someone, I want them to do it again. If it's in your liver, is that alcohol related? It, those stones? It can be, but the liver is the largest organ in the body, and it oh, has it is. to do with anger. So that's why a lot of people do drink, because they're trying to suppress sure, the anger yeah. in their liver, and then it just becomes a conditional feed. And what do you do to do this? Um, so it's a regimen that you do. You have to fast for the day, and then at night, about 6.30, you take Epsom salts with water. You mix mag- a, a high amount of magnesium okay. in water, and you do that, and then you wait in about an hour, and you do it one more time. You take about three tablespoons of Epsom and water, and then um, about an hour after that, you take it's. You have to have a really high grade olive oil, organic olive oil with grapefruit juice, and you mix it up and you drink that, and then you go lay on your right side so that it can work its way in the gallbladder yeah. and then push it out through the liver. It's it's very nauseating, um, but you have almost instant results are you able to do that like at home and you can just pass it into your toilet yeah most people so they do that at home they pass a ton in their toilet and then they come to me and then we have the next day the next day and then we get oh man i need to do that yes i mean i'm not i wouldn't say i'm an angry person but i have anger yes and obviously i i like the i like a nice whiskey every uh, every occasion so i bet you i got like mad liver stones so yeah processing liver so the the person i'm working with right now we haven't even done her gall or liver flesh yet she's only today's day three yesterday was day two and we already got like it was like probably 50 to 100 gall stones came out oh my god have you done an alcoholic oh yeah Um, what's that like um very successful yeah but I would imagine. really emotional i'm sure really emotional hard really hard and you know it's interesting they they smell different 
when you, someone is an alcoholic. Yeah, well, you're fermenting or, you know, like in your body. Smells, yep. Yeah. Like fermentation. Yeah, exactly. And it's really, really hard. But it's, um, I mean, it's so beneficial that it's it's interesting how people can regenerate and um, be okay. With I think that's the cool things. thing about it is that you can, whatever you're going, whatever's going on in your life, you have the ability to change it. Yes. You know? Yes. Even and disease, all of that. So. All of it. Right. And I... I, I mean, we go instantly to big pharma to get radiated and chemotherapy when all you really have to do is change your diet and flush it out. Um, the body, all the, you know, tumors just built up proteins and what breaks down proteins is enzymes and what's enzymes is sound and fruit, organic fruit water. So if you can just change your diet and change what you're doing and the habits, which are, it will just eliminate sickness and disease from your body. I truly believe in that theory. Yeah. And I believe in that too. Yeah. Well, is there anything you want to leave the listeners with? Um, just gratitude. Thanks for listening. This has been so awesome. Thank you so much for having oh, me. Oh, yeah. I'm so glad you did because I'm so fascinated by it and I find it to be incredible. So having you come on and share, it's just so cool. Thank you so much, Cody. This has been so great. Good. I love it. Thank you, Aaron. Yeah, you're welcome.